you short. I'm so sorry. Pierre Polyev is just holding a news conference in Toronto. Let's listen to the Conservative leader as he speaks this morning in Toronto. Because of the inflationist deficits that increases the rates and the bureaucracy that stops the construction of homes. So we have one out of every five Canadians skipping meals because they cannot pay for groceries. We have 1.5 million who must go to a food bank because of the fact that their food is too expensive. We have 9 out of 10 young people who believe they will never be able to buy a house. That's never been the case before Justin Trudeau. And we have people living in tents, nurses who live in their cars, a carpenter that I met in Northern Ontario who must live in a parking lot because of the increase of rent that we see after eight years of Justin Trudeau. Justin Trudeau is not worth it. He's not worth it. We need to replace him. The good news is that it wasn't like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after Justin Trudeau. We will, we will use the common sense of Mr. and Mrs. Everybody to fix the problems that Trudeau has caused. We will lower prices by eliminating, eliminating taxes and inflationist deficits. We will make paychecks stronger by reducing taxes so that Canadians can bring back more of they, their pay home. We will make houses and apartments more affordable by insisting that municipalities accelerate construction permits and otherwise they will lose infrastructure funds from the federal government. We will make our streets safer by putting real relapsing criminals in prison. That is common sense and that's what I will bring back once I am Prime Minister. Now in English. Well, just inflation has struck again. Trudeau's inflationary taxes and deficits have sent prices rising again with inflation on the march. Trudeau told us that he had the problem fixed last month. Well, it turned out that was not true. His carbon tax is driving up gas, heat and groceries. The $60 billion of additional inflationary deficits he added last month, our last budget, are now bidding up the goods we buy and the interest we pay. This was entirely predictable, and we warned him it would be the case. Worse, after eight years of Trudeau, housing costs have doubled. The rent has doubled, mortgage payments have doubled, the needed down payment has doubled. Here in Toronto, it now takes 25 years for the average person to save for a down payment. Before Trudeau, you could pay off an entire mortgage in 25 years. Now that's how long it takes just to get a mortgage. Rent has risen almost 100% under Trudeau and his policies. And now, I, I used to talk about the 35-year-old living in his mom's basement. People thought that was crazy. Now, that's the least of our concerns. Now the worry is that that 35-year-old and his mom will be evicted and moving into a tent. There are tent cities in almost every major Canadian centre after eight years of Trudeau. We have nurses living in vans. I met a carpenter who lives in his car. We have, uh, we have seniors in Penticton who live in parking lots. Middle-class seniors in Canada after eight years of Justin Trudeau. The good news is, to all of those people who are hungry, who worry about losing their homes, who believe they have no future because they can't afford one after eight years of Trudeau, the good news for them is that there is hope. Canada was not like this before Trudeau, and it will not be like this after he's gone.
We're going to turn the hurt that he has caused into the hope that Canadians need. A common-sense Conservative government will bring home lower prices by axing the carbon tax and by capping spending and cutting waste to balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. We will bring home powerful paychecks by lowering income tax so hard work once again pays off. We will bring homes people can afford by removing the bureaucracy and taxes that block home building. Canada has the fewest homes per capita in the G7 because bureaucrats and gatekeepers block construction. I will require big cities permit 15% more home building per year or lose their federal housing, lose their federal infrastructure grants. Those that beat that goal will get a building bonus. And I'll require every federally funded transit station be surrounded by high density apartments so that our seniors and our youth can live right next to the bus or train. We'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build the homes that will put roof overhead for our working class people. And we'll, those homes will be in safe streets. We will bring in jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders. We will invest in treatment and recovery, not more tax-funded drugs, to put an end to the tent cities and to bring our loved ones home drug-free. Today, I'm calling on Justin Trudeau to recognize the inflation crisis he has caused and announce that he is axing his carbon tax and, and putting in a place a plan to get rid of his inflationary deficits. We are prepared, because of the gravity of the situation, to put our differences aside and work with him to, to ax his carbon tax and to balance the budget to bring home lower prices. Because we will always put Canadians first. It's common sense. The common sense of the common people united for our common home. Let's bring it home. Thank you. Any questions? You gave an ultimatum to her colleagues. What should be cut as a priority, and will it be enough? Well, first, there's a lot of cuts that the Liberals have promised, but have never been delivered. Justin Trudeau promised that he would eliminate three billion dollars of spending when arriving in power. He's found no savings. However, he inflated the cost of contracts to firms like McKenzie and other connected firms and expensive firms, which has doubled up to $21 billion. That's a lot of waste for work that could be done within the government instead of being contracted to large businesses who charge us $2,000 a day for each consultant. And that's just an example. The Arrive Can app, another waste of money, $54 million. These types of spending waste our money. And I suggest a law that is dollar for dollar. The law would force ministers to find $1 in savings for each new dollar of spending. This will force discipline, fiscal discipline, that each single mother, each businessman, each person of the working class has to do in their own personal lives. Politicians should do the same. Thank you. And do you think 15 billion is enough? Response, they'll never do it. She can give any number, any number, any amount, but Justin Trudeau is unable to deliver because he is incompetent and he loves wasting money. He's never going to respect his commitments for spending. He promised a 10 billion deficit max and now he's added more than 500 billion to our national debt. So we cannot trust Justin Trudeau when it comes to our money because he is incompetent who loves spending other people's money because he never has to pay the bill. So he's not worth it. He's not worth our time.
to come up with specific cuts as part of an effort to achieve about $15 billion. Do you support cutting the $15 billion from the federal budget? And where would you cut it? Well, first of all, we can't trust Justin Trudeau with our money. He won't achieve these savings because he never does. When he got elected, he promised he would find $3 billion of savings. And he started a process. And guess what? They found after looking in all the corners of the government, they couldn't save a penny, but they'd come up with a bunch of ideas for even more spending. <laughs> so you can't make this stuff up. Justin Trudeau will never find savings because he is incompetent with money. He believes budgets balance themselves and he will simply print the money, borrow the money, or tax the money from hardworking Canadians. Pierre Polyev-led government will root out waste, mismanagement, and corruption. We will bring in a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law requiring politicians find one dollar of savings for every one dollar of new spending. This law allowed um, the uh, Clinton administration in the States to balance its budget and pay off $4 billion of debt in the U.S. And it's something that we could use as a hard discipline, the same discipline that single mothers or factory workers or small business owners follow every day in managing their money should be the discipline that we follow. When I'm Prime Minister, we will follow it. We're going to balance the budget to bring home lower inflation and lower interest rates. Thank you. Yes. In the 1970s, the Canadian government was able to solve the housing crisis by lowering immigration and building more homes. So far, you've refused to commit to cutting immigration targets. But would a Polyev government adopt the same strategy that worked so well in the 70s to build more homes? To build more homes? Absolutely. In fact, in 1972, we built more houses than we built last year. Think about that. 50 years ago, we built more homes than we did last year. So let's do the math. In 1972, Canada's population was 2.2 million people. Sorry, excuse me, 22 million people. 22 million Canadians, we built 250,000 homes. Last year, our population was 39 million people. And we built 219,000 homes. So with nearly double the population, we're building fewer houses. And CMHC expects that we will build, this year, we're going to build 32% fewer homes. Why is this? Because Trudeau keeps shoveling billions of dollars into local government gatekeepers, municipal level, who block construction. We have the second slowest building permits of any country in the OECD. The cost of uh, development charges has gone up 900% in some municipalities. Government costs add $1.2 million to the cost of every, uni every unit of housing that is newly built in Vancouver. It's 350 grand here in this city of Toronto. We cannot afford to give more money to the same municipal gatekeepers who block housing construction. And that's why my common sense plan is to require cities permit 15% more home building per year or I will, I will pull back their federal grants. Those that beat the 15% target will get a building bonus. I'll require every federally funded transit station have high density apartments around and even on top. I'll sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal lands to build, build, build. We will remove the gatekeepers and we will build homes that our working class people can once again afford, just like they could afford eight years ago. Sorry, please. Um, the, uh, that's a decision for the provincial government. Uh, I do support more construction right across Canada. Uh, we have the fewest homes per capita of any country in the G7, even though we have by far the most land to build on. And that is because of government gatekeeping and regulatory rules that stand in the way. So I was speaking to a developer in Ottawa just the other day at a, co a coffee shop. He tells me, that he was supposed to have his permit to start building in June. And they said, oh, we'll delay it till July. And then I, was, I met with them in August. They said, oh, no, we're bumping it off till October because our planner's on vacation. And that's just the last four months. This is 1,700 homes he wants to build. Well, we have people living in tent cities. It is becoming a crisis. And the last thing we need is to give more federal tax dollars 
to incompetent local government gatekeepers to block construction. What we need is to get tough on the gatekeepers and tell them they either get out of the way and let builders build or they will lose federal grants. That is the only way we're going to incentivize faster, cheaper building permits to build, build, and build. Time for one more. Question. One more. Can you say that in French? We nous avons le moins de maisons. So we have the least amount of homes per capita of all the G7 countries, even though we have the largest amount of land to build. Why? It's because it takes too long to get a construction permit. Take Montreal. Montreal, based on uh, a study from the Economic Institute, Montreal stopped the construction of 24,000 homes. Vancouver, sorry, Winnipeg was sued by a, cons a home constructor because the city wanted to block 2,000 homes close to public transit. It doesn't make any sense. And Justin Trudeau, he's giving more money. He's feeding the bureaucracy that's stopping construction. I will tell large municipalities that they need to accelerate and reduce the cost of construction permits or I will remove their money. I will ask municipalities as a condition for um, infrastructure, federal money, an increase of a 15% increase in construction permits and those who are able to do more will receive a bonus we will insist that each uh, public transit station has um, construction permits for large apartments so that young people and seniors can live close to buses and we will sell 6,000 um, buildings and federal acres to build, build and build. It's common sense and that's how we're going to build homes for the, the, the our people need. Thank you. All right, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev speaking to reporters following a brief statement 